Hoy nos acompaña Don Tapscott, una de las principales autoridades mundiales en el impacto de la tecnología en las empresas y la sociedad. Es autor de 16 libros, incluido Blockchain Revolution y cofundador del Blockchain Research Institute en Toronto. Don Tapscott participará de Millonario Masterminds, con la conferencia principal La transformación digital en la segunda era de Internet y la Masterclass Criptomonedas, activos digitales y la reinvención de los servicios financieros. Pues como decíamos, Don Tapscott será sin duda eh, uno de los ponentes principales, el protagonizará la conferencia principal de eh, Millonario Masterminds que se llevará a cabo este año, como bien sabéis, 17 y 18 de julio. Saludamos, tengo a mi lado al director de Millonarios Masterminds, Marc Lusa. Marc, bienvenido, ¿qué tal? Alex, ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, gracias, muchas gracias. La verdad que tenemos todo, todo un lujo hoy tener a, a Don aquí en, en pues nuestro, sí, la en nuestro es que programa. Sí. Es algo realmente excepcional. Excepcional. Has hecho una gran presentación. Sin más preámbulos, Don, bienvenido. Muchas gracias por tenerte aquí hoy. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Es todo un honor. Eh, antes de nada, también agradecerte la, la participación, como no, de Millonario Mastermind, que vas a estar como presente en nuestra conferencia principal. También desde aquí agradecerte una vez más que hayas confiado en nuestro proyecto y, lógicamente, bienvenido a la gran familia Millonario. Sin más preámbulos, eh, Don, queríamos preguntarte, hay muchas de las preguntas, pero no queremos robarte mucho tiempo. Háblanos sobre todo del blockchain, pero una pregunta que tenemos muy clave sería... ¿Puedes decirnos cuáles serían los sectores en los que crees que el blockchain impactará más en los próximos años? Cuéntanos. Well, I think that I think that blockchain will affect all sectors uh, of the economy. And uh, let me step back and explain why. That for 40 years we've had an internet of information. But if I send you some information, an email, a photograph, I'm actually sending you a copy. Even with a website, I keep the original. And that works great for information. But it doesn't work well for assets, things of value that belong to somebody like money or stocks or bonds or contracts or deeds or the data in our identities or intellectual property or art or music or a vote. A vote is an asset, something of value that belongs to somebody. Copying those is a bad idea. So if I, um, if I send you uh, 100,000 pesos, it's really important that I don't still have the money, right? And you don't want someone copying your identity or your vote. So the way that we handle this problem in society is through intermediaries, banks, credit card companies, governments, Um, uh, stock exchanges, um, social media companies, and they perform all of the business and transaction logic of every type of commerce. They enable us to trust each other. But there are growing problems with these intermediaries. They're being hacked. They exclude a billion people from the global financial system. They capture our data so that we can't use it or monetize it. And our privacy is being undermined. There are many problems. So enter blockchain. In 2008, an anonymous person or persons named Satoshi Nakamoto solved this problem of intermediaries. Cryptographers called it the double spend problem. And that's what Bitcoin did. Now, it started with Bitcoin, but now it's expanding much beyond Bitcoin. Bitcoin is sort of like the first app of this new internet of value. Like email was the first app for the internet of information. And this is, to answer your question, a truly extraordinary thing because we now have an internet for value where anything of value from money to music to a vote can be managed, stored, transacted in a secure and private way where trust is not achieved by a middleman, it's achieved by cryptography and collaboration and some very clever code. So every part of the economy will be affected, I believe more so than the internet of information. And we can see this now in many different aspects of, of economic life. 
Uh, Tom, ¿puede darnos algunos ejemplos de cómo el blockchain transformará los servicios financieros y te hará una gran cantidad de beneficios a, a costos más bajos? Well, it did begin in the financial services industry because that's where a lot of assets are, a lot of value like money and securities. But this is a very arcane industry. Think about it. You tap your card at a, at a Starbucks and a bunch of messages go through six or seven companies and um, each with their own costs, each with their own delay, um, each with their own counterparty risk. And then three days later, a clearing and settlement occurs and somebody gets paid. Well, if that were based on a blockchain, a distributed ledger, kind of like a global spreadsheet that everyone shares, there would be no three day settlement period because the payment and the settlement is the very same activity. It's just a change to the ledger. So that's an example of how the financial services industry is being transformed very fundamentally. Imagine a payment system based on blockchain where you could have instant real time settlement where you could have micro payments, a light bulb could purchase some power from a market, an energy market, where you could have smart money. You know, you send your kid off to university, you give him some money, you hope that he spends it on books and tuition. Well, if that was smart money, he goes into the bar, he orders a caparina or a mojito or something, and the money says, sorry, Johnny, I don't, I don't do mojitos, you know, capatinas. <laughs> and so um, we, we could have, we could have um, a real time single version of the truth. Right now there are multiple versions of the truth in commerce and supply chains and so on. And a payment system is one of 50 different areas of the financial industry that are beginning to be disrupted by this technology. Now, a really big one is the whole issue of digital assets. All assets in the financial industry, like money, stocks, bonds, derivatives, swaps, um, uh, various kinds of securities, contracts, um, deeds, um, all of these are becoming digitized so that they are actual bearer instruments. They move around on the internet. And you can see this now in terms of the marketplace for things like Bitcoin and e e Ethereum's uh, currency called Ether. And there are many others. Cosmos has atoms. And, um, and this, is, this is a store of value, kind of like gold was a store of value, but it's also a medium of exchange. It's a way of making payments. Mm -hmm. So I'll just give you one little example. Why does it take four to seven days from a housekeeper in uh, Toronto to send money uh, or a doctor in Toronto to send money to her mom in Barcelona? And why is she charged 10 to 20%? She can send an email and it's instant and it's free. There are no cross-border email charges. So sending money should be just as easy. This is called remittances. It's a trillion dollar market of people who've left their ancestral lands and they're part of the global diaspora and they send money back home. So there are now blockchain-based remittance systems that don't cost 10% or 20%, they cost 1%. Mm -hmm. And they don't take seven days, they take seven minutes. So. This industry is about and is already beginning to be transformed. Uh, Don, si habláramos ahora con respecto a los negocios, ¿qué nos podrías decir? ¿Cómo puedes decirnos que el blockchain remolerará la mayoría de la industria a mejor o para mejor? ¿Qué nos puedes decir? Well, I think that technology doesn't transform industries or organizations, people do. But we have an extraordinary new technology now that can enable us to make very fundamental changes. So consider something like a supply chain. 
Okay, you have trains and boats and planes and trucks and various different business partners, and there are borders and tax authorities, and there are intermediaries and customs people and and transfer agents and escrow agents, and and there are documents that are that are um, uh, faxes and emails and EDI uh, payment uh, systems and bills of lading and this is a very comp things that there's paper things moving around in a very serial way imagine if that were a shared network state a global distributed ledger that anyone could see where there was full transparency where there were real time transactions this would radically help us solve many of the supply chain problems that we're having right now as we come out of the pandemic. I mean, why, all around the world, people had trouble getting toilet paper. How is this possible? They were hoarding. Well, why do you hoard? You hoard because of fear and you hoard because of lack of transparency. If you know that the supply chain is delivering more toilet paper to your store tomorrow, you won't buy three years of it. You'll buy enough to last you for the next couple of weeks. So um, we could build a whole new supply chain that would help us solve many of the problems that we've had during the pandemic. And there are many initiatives underway today to do this. Y en relación al gobierno y la democracia, ¿qué opina? de que el voto electrónico se pueda realizar a través del blockchain, es decir, que podamos evitar ir al colegio electoral y votar de una manera segura a través del blockchain. Well, democracy and government is another set of institutions that are in crisis. And you can see this in the United States where there's an actual crisis of legitimacy of the government and of democracy. Legitimacy is the idea that you may disagree with who's in power, but at least you think the system is a good system. Right now, a third of the American population thinks that the election was a fraud. Um, they have no evidence to say that, but because of the fragmentation of public discourse on the media, anybody, like a former president, can make a statement and everybody finds out about it and everybody can share that that uh, point of view or someone can say that vaccinations are dangerous and that point of view gets shared so the internet of information was a wonderful thing but it did create a whole number of problems and we have today a crisis of this first era of democracy where we created representative institutions that was better than kings and nobles deciding everything but there was a weak public mandate citizens were inert and passive and politicians are really beholden to big money and private interests that put them into power so could we move to a second era of democracy where we have a culture of public deliberation where we have facts that are traceable and people know the truth, where we have um, uh, active citizenship, where we have transparency so that people can see who are all the funders behind someone being elected. And blockchain is not going to solve this problem, but again, it creates some opportunities. We could have secure voting systems. Nobody's going to vote online and really trust it until they have cryptographic proof that the double spend problem that Satoshi solved has been dealt with. You want to know that your vote was cast for the person for whom you voted. And it can't be moved, can't be deleted or changed. Only blockchain can do that. But blockchain could do many more things. Like you could have a smart vote. Why isn't your vote inside a smart contract that specifies not only who you're voting for, but what their program is? And the contract says, I vote for you, but you must implement this program. 
you must not implement the program of your wealthy funders. I'm the voter and you're accountable to me. And if you don't implement the program that you said you would, there are consequences. Maybe you don't get paid. Maybe uh, we have a new election. So this is one of many opportunities where we could rebuild our entire model of democracy. This is not just about voting on a blockchain. It's about changing the relationship between citizens and their governments for a whole new era. Usted, Don, alguna vez ha dicho, y es algo, es una cuestión en la que profundizará en esta masterclass que dará Millonario Masterminds, 2021, los días 17 y 18 de julio. Habla de que el Internet de la información era de dominio público, pero que el Internet del valor, con el blockchain, es y será propiedad de los inversores. ¿Puede explicar cómo funcionará eso? Well, this is a very interesting point of view from an investor. Now, everyone's wondering, well, should I be investing in crypto? And uh, many people say, well, no, this is a bubble. It's like the tulip market in uh, Holland uh, hundreds of years ago, or it's like the dot-com bubble. And for sure, there's lots of volatility, and you need to be very cautious. But think about this idea that the Internet of Information was in the public domain. It was not owned by anyone. Thank you to people like Vince Cerf, and, uh, who uh, co-created the Internet, and, and um, Tim Berners-Lee, who invented the World Wide Web. The Internet of Value is different. It will be owned by investors. The base protocols of this new internet will be owned by people who invest in it. So how big is the internet of information worth? I don't know, a trillion dollars, 10 trillion dollars, a hundred trillion dollars, I don't know, a lot, it's worth a lot. How big is the internet of value? What will its value be? Well, this is, Clearly, it's something that will be very huge. So there's an argue to be made that we're in the early days of the biggest investment opportunity ever. So when in my um, Millenario Masterminds uh, workshop, I'm going to be talking about this and helping people think about investing in a sensible way. Wow, qué interesante. De, de hecho, nos hemos quedado Alex y yo sin, sin, casi sin palabras. Sin palabras, sin palabras. De hecho, palabra. gran, gran sabiduría. Se nos ha hecho muy corto. No ten, eh, Alex, no tenemos mucho no, tiempo más. Estaremos mucho más, pero... Estaremos mucho, mucho tiempo más. No sin antes agradecerte, Don, que hayas aceptado, como no, nuestra invitación una vez más. Recordar también que a nuestros oyentes telespectadores... Como, he dicho, como hemos dicho al principio, Don Tapscott va a estar presente en la conferencia principal, concretamente con la transformación digital en la segunda era de Internet. Y como no también, que no lo he dicho al inicio, va a estar en una masterclass, perdón, masterclass nombrada Criptomonedas, Activos Digitales y la Reinvención de los Servicios Financieros. Recordad que va a ser el sábado... 17 de julio, aquí en Barcelona, en el Hotel Hilton. No os lo perderemos. No nos lo perderemos, ahí estaremos. Y sin más preámbulos, ¿no, Alex? Que vamos a despedirnos. Sí. Don Tapscott, gracias por estar. Muchas okay, gracias, Don. Start. Nos vemos en Millonario Mastermind. A vosotros, no sin antes despedirnos una vez más, dar las gracias a nuestros sponsors como Andorra, New Telecom, como no, Alex, a Galaxia TV, nuestra productora, y a Neuronix. No dejéis de seguir nuestras redes sociales, ya lo sabéis, están ahí, lo dejéis, lo dejamos aquí, ¿verdad? Y Alex, no nos dejamos nada, ¿no? En principio. Nada más, que os esperamos a todos en Millonario Mastermind, 17 y 18 de julio. Ahí nos veremos. Gracias, amigos. Gracias, Don. Hasta Barcelona.